Next up on my arcade repair to-do list is Miss Pac-Man. During my arcade review in January, I noticed that there were lines going through the sprites on the ghosts and Miss Pac-Man herself. The game was still playable and I figured I just needed to nudge one of the daughter boards or something, but fast forward to last week and indeed nudging some socketed RAM fixed the lines, but I noticed the ghosts were misbehaving. Ghosts were jumping walls, Blinky and Sue were hitched up together, and Pinky missed his curtain call. Time to get this PCB on the bench. I unlatched the top of the machine, unplugged it, and with a rolled up yoga mat hidden behind the machine to rest the monitor on, I carefully opened up the cabinet. Make sure you have lots of room, I had to nudge it forward to avoid hitting Donkey Kong. Removing the PCB is pretty easy, but you have to push wires out of the way to avoid snags. Miss Pac-Man is actually an upgrade to Pac-Man, using this small daughter board to expand the memory available. At the bench, I grabbed my compatible JAMA adapter, which is labeled as Galaxian, same pinout. This game normally takes AC power and rectifies it on board, but you can supply DC for testing. 5 volts at the harness edge won't quite be enough because it goes through a big diode. I found I had to max out my arcade power supply at about 5.4 volts to get it to boot. Definitely do not run a game in a cabinet this way, there are DC mods available that are safe. The first thing I did was to check out the four 93425 RAM chips that were causing the lines in the sprites. Even though nudging the chips around cleared up the lines, the old RAM all tested bad in my Neolog tester, so I just went ahead and replaced them with nice new looking AMD equivalents that tested good. Turning on the game, I see the same effects of the ghosts riding each other in the intro. I can try the test mode, but all I get is memory okay, although according to the manual this can only check the program ROMs and a row of 2114 SRAM that's already been replaced on my board. Taking a look at the schematics, I decided to start checking chips that feed into the sprite graphic ROMs. Since the ghosts were intact, just in the wrong place, it seems the ROMs were being addressed correctly, just kind of at the wrong time. I poked around various chips and couldn't find any signals that looked unhealthy. This started to lead me to suspect another RAM failure since RAM can fail internally but still put out healthy signals. The only remaining unchanged RAM in this area was a pair of 82S25 RAM chips at 3F and 3H. I decided to see if I could find out what these RAM chips keep track of, and surprisingly, Pac-Man has an official IC level troubleshooting guide, a total rarity in arcade games. These are entries for 3F and 3H, and they refer to jerky movement and missing characters. That sounds like what we have on this board. So I found my stash of these RAM chips, which is Soviet overstock of 7489 RAM, which is equivalent to 82S25, and tried piggybacking 3H. Piggybacking is the act of simply stacking a new chip over the old one in hopes that the working chip will overpower the failing one. This can be dangerous and lead to short circuits if the chip slides off and is certainly not for a permanent fix. Seeing no change with 3H, I moved the new chip to 3F and noticed differences in the patterns of the ghosts. This is a good sign for me. Next I removed all the 82S25 RAM on the board which included two more close by. It's definitely not encouraged to mess with chips that have given you no indication of failure, but since literally every other RAM chip has failed on this board in the past, it seemed like a good idea to swap it while it was on the bench. Once the chips were removed, I noticed how discolored the circuit board was underneath each of these chips, evidence that the originals ran pretty hot. I tested the chips in my Neolock SRAM tester. I tried 3F first, the one that I suspected of failing, and indeed it failed. 3H and the other two chips passed, so it looks like we found the culprit. I soldered in sockets, which is always a good idea when replacing components for both continued troubleshooting and to make future work easier. You have to be very careful soldering on Pac-Man boards, there are exposed traces that run very close to IC pins. I had to fix a few of these myself. Sticking in the new RAM and turning the board on again, we have success. Well, that about wraps it up for this repair. Stay tuned for the next one, which I think will be my Tetris with faulty graphics. Until next time.